or a fist, whatever you do. to the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being translated King of Righteousness, and then also King of Salem, meaning King of Peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Whew. Just going to pull out some things um, tonight, and this is just one, and, and we might move to something else, and something else, and something else. I've got like lots of different things happening, but I just want to declare that the house of the order of Melchizedek has been established in this nation. And now we can build according to the order of Melchizedek. And if you don't fully um, understand that, that's okay. In time, you will understand it because it's not something that's going to be passing away. It's not something that can be robbed. It's not something that can be squashed. It's established, it's done. The foundation has gone deep and the foundation has gone wide. While everybody thought the nation was going into chaos, there was another story happening. And the foundation has been set and now it's time to build. And this order is not a natural order and it is not a spiritual order. It is an eternal order. Okay? It's not about the spiritual realm. It's about the eternal realm. That's been established in our lives and in this place. It says that Melchizedek neither had genealogy. Mum or dad wasn't found. So that talks about an eternal state of being. The realm of eternity is the order of Melchizedek and Yeshua. He has become our high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Read Hebrews 5, 6, 7 and 8. It's all about the transition from grace into perfection. Ask The thing is about the order of Melchizedek or the realm of eternity, the order of eternity, the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Yeshua. It's all about that dimension of, of limitlessness 
It's all about everything that we've been going on about in the last couple of days. It's all about the transition from, um, from an earth-based life, not to a spiritual life, but eternal life. Yeshua didn't give us a spiritual life. He didn't bring us into the spirits. He brought us into eternity. Okay, That's why you got all this other stuff happening and the church is caught up in it. All sorts of familiar spirits running around because they're living in the spirits instead of eternity. Eternity, Yeshua is the door into eternity Whew. he's not the door in the spirit we so we, we, when we say spirit we automatically think holy spirit i'm not talking about holy spirit holy spirit is is our father he is eternal but i'm talking about the spiritual the invisible realm around us and the layers that there are the eternal is what Yeshua is the door to. That's why it's not waiting until, until we are going to heaven to enter that place. Right. If we're in the spirit, yeah. as in the spiritual realm, if we're in the spirit, yes, we will wait until yeah. the body dies and then enter into eternity. But if we are in the law of the spirit of Christ, through that law we enter in to the realm of eternity right now. That's why we can lay hold of all that Christ has done for us right now. We can bring it in to our body. We can bring it into our environment. In fact, that is our commission that is our mandate to bring the realm of eternity into the earth, into the environment that we are. That's our commission. What is the will of God? That is the will of God for your life. That we become so abandoned, so surrendered, so given over that we are willing to lose our life. So that we would enter into the life of Christ what is that life that life is eternity eternity now right now what we've been experiencing is the opening up the gates the ancient gates and the doors for that realm to start to flourish in your life to flourish in your environment to flourish through us so this is not something by our own hand this is something by the law of that spirit of life that works in us to bring us into to take us out of mortality and release immortality the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of me therefore he gives life to my physical body turning mortality into immortality. That is our reality. Woo. It's our reality. The mind wrestles. The carnal mind, the flesh, wars against the spirit. It wars. It doesn't understand it. Paul said that the carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of the Spirit. The things of the Spirit of eternity. The Spirit of Christ. The way of the kingdom of heaven. The way of our Father. The mind cannot comprehend it. So we wrestle with it. But I can tell you, it's not going to stop it. And His desire for every single one of us is to come into the fullness of that reality in our life. How do we know that? What did Yeshua say? On earth. Huh? As it is in heaven. <laughs> um, it's right there. <laughs> 
So why are we waiting to go to heaven? Why are we waiting to go to heaven? Why are we waiting to go to heaven when we can have the reality of that now? You know what a seed does? You know what a deposit does? It's planted in us. Do you think that that seed and that plant is supposed to sit in us, wait till our body dies, and then we go to heaven? No. A seed has a purpose to be planted, to grow, and then to grow, and then to grow, and then to come forth, and come forth, and come forth, and come forth in this realm, in this place, right now. This is the order of Melchizedek. The realm of eternity being made manifested through our life, which Yeshua, as the high priest and the king of all kings and the Lord of all laws, has established for us as the chief cornerstone. He is the chief cornerstone, and he has established the cornerstone of eternity, of a new world, a new order to be made manifested, a new creation to be made manifested in this realm. Now in Daniel, it talks about kingdoms that will rise up, the kingdom of stone and, and clay and all these sort of things. And it says once those kingdoms have been established in the earth, there is yet one more kingdom to come, one more kingdom to rise up. And this is what it says in Daniel, he says, in the midst of those kingdoms. Now I want to tell you something, we're waiting for Yeshua to come back. Or we're waiting for our body to grow old and die. We're waiting for Yeshua, the, exactly the same thing that Israel was. Ah, my gosh, no, this King, this Messiah is going to come in and he's going to take over the Romans. He's going to establish his kingdom. And we're looking for the same thing. When in Daniel, he foresaw and he saw a kingdom that was going to rise up in the midst. In the midst of us. There is a kingdom inside of every single one of us. In the midst of you, there's an eternal realm inside. There is an order of the order of Melchizedek in Christ that has been deposited. A cornerstone that is inside of you that is waiting for the living stone to bring agreement. For that kingdom to, to start to rise up within you. It's not, it's not going to wait until you are perfect. Until your soul is all sorted out. Until your mind is all sorted out. He said, in the midst of you. In the midst of those Babylonian kingdoms. In the midst of the natural realm. In the midst of the chaos. Ah! In the midst of the chaos, creation, Genesis, in the midst of the chaos, the deep, the spirit hovers to awaken, to rise up something with inside of every single one of us. It's the new creation. It's the new creation to rise up in us and through us. It's living stones. The Bible says that we're living stones. That we are being built together for a habitation. Building together for a habitation. Not building together so we can go to heaven. Ah! We've got to set that up. We've got to, we got to shift our mind. We've got to dismantle yeah. what we've known. What we've ex what we experienced. Because in the midst of us, the living stone, the building, is being built together for a habitation. What's the habitation? Is it for heaven? No. It's for this realm, the habitation of our Father. Now, Yeshua, when He, when he gave His life, you know, it was more than just... Just like so that we could go to heaven one day. It was establishing the cornerstone in the earth as fully man and fully God. Established. Yeah. Getting another pillar. Yeah. 
establishing that new creation, that pillar, that government of his kingdom, getting another pillar, establishing. He started that over 2,000 years ago in time, manifested it. A new creation had started. The new creation, the new world, the new heaven. We look at the scripture and think a heaven is going to come and a new earth is going to come. But we don't realize in the midst of these other governments, a kingdom, a creation, a new earth and a new heaven is is being built in us and through us. That's why for years and years and now years, meaning 30. (laughs) That's the only way that I've ever thought. And to get to this place, to get to the, 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 the roar of the sound of that frequency of eternity, cracking open and terraforming the environment and the earth to open it up for the acceleration of that creation being released in our life. The tearing down, the shattering that's just been taking place in our lives in this place right now. We are changed from this moment. Every single one of us. Some of us might not feel like it. Some of us know it. But some of us will find out because we'll start to think differently. We'll start to see differently. But you've got to understand that right now, right now, we are in the new creation. Right? We're not waiting for Yeshua to come back. We're not waiting for, you know, heaven. We're not, we're not like Israel in that sense of waiting for this mighty king to come and slay everybody and establish. Do you you understand? That's what we still have. Whole cultures are built on the fact of waiting to go to heaven and waiting for Yeshua. He's going to come back this year. He's going to come back next year. He's going to come back in 10 years. Now, I'd say say 1942. He's coming back. It's until... It's until the full manifestation. I mean, what, I mean what, 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 is, what, is the, what does the scripture say? For the earth is an eager expectation for the manifestation, the unveiling, the revealing of the sons of God to come forth, the participation of creation and releasing the sound to bring forth that reality in our lives and in this place. It's, the earth isn't waiting. It's travailing. It's resounding. And we're just sitting back waiting. Hey, we're just sitting back waiting. Let's join the earth. Do you understand the agreement that that happened tonight with creation? The unlocking of the deep and the releasing of the waters to, to, to recreate. the full unveiling. We are in that right now. It's not something we're waiting for. Yeshua was the chief cornerstone. He established it. He's building it. And all of us are pillars in the house of our Lord in which the new heaven is built on. That's why it's so important not to externally look for something to happen, but the position of our heart and our desire is to come into Him and so abandon our hearts in Him until we see Him. And then when we, as we see Him, we behold Him. And as we behold Him, we become like Him. Next minute, another pillar gets built in that and, and the increase of that dimension of eternity just is released in this realm and it starts to recreate. You understand that Daniel it says in the midst of those kingdoms, this kingdom that would never see any end is going to rise up. It's going to, it's going to rise up in the midst of, I want you to get that. We are in the midst of the rising. We are in the midst 
of the new creation. We are in the midst of the new heaven. We're in the midst of the new earth. And if we can lay hold of that and allow that to be built. And that's why I thank you for giving me that. And you got this portal thing there, got that portal thing there, and it's this realm <laughs> just opening up. And that just empowered me to speak that. That was awesome. Thank you. Oh, boy. Did you know what did the Father do in the first creation? Just have a think. What did he do? What emanated from him? Pardon? Lightning. Oh, he said, let there be. So in the, the first creation, in, as he's creating, he said, let there be. Now, let there be wasn't English. <laughs> It was frequency, it was sound, it was vibration, it was manifestation of Yeshua going forth out of the heart of the Father into all creation. <laughs> I learned that from Rowan. <laughs> so what do you think's happening now? What do you think happens? When we, when we release the sound. Why is it important? To not just be inward, but to take that which is in, to release out. What is that? That is the light. That is the breath. That is the let there be. The accelerated creative life force of the Father shot out into creation. And drew up. Do you understand this? That in you. Do you want to see is that? In you is the hope of glory. What is the hope of glory? The creative life force. Christ in me. What did it say of the word in John 1? That Yeshua is the light and the life of all men. What is he? He is the light. He is the sound. He is the frequency. He is the very breath of the Father inside of us. Christ, the hope of glory in us. The hope to then lift up and open up for the resounding of that sound to go forth into all creation. Why did the Father give you dominion? Because you are a son of God and you are creator as he is our creator if we are in his image. And then therefore he has put within you his light and his life. And now that light and that life has to now come out into this realm. That's why it's so important to open up our mouth. That's why it's important to open up our body for the sound of His voice to break forth through us into all creation. It's not just to make a noise. It's a noise. I think we just have to get over it. It's noisy. Yes, there's stillness. Yes, there's quietness. But there is lightnings that has to shoot forth from us to 
in Israel look at the mountain and say, that's not God. That's too loud when the thunder and the lightning was on the mountain. When the voice roared out. Hey. Moses must have been awesome. He just went straight up. It's not just that, oh no, I don't do that. It's not me. It's not about you. Come on. It's not about us. It's about Him. And it's about Him breaking forth like the dawn. Hello? What's the dawn? Light? Yep, it's the rising. <laughs> okay, good. The sun rising. <laughs> yeah. The dawn. It's the light. The light and the life breaking open. The dawn breaking open into creation is the light breaking open outside of you into all creation. That's what's going to release the new heaven and the new earth. That's what's going to cause your physical body to transform into light as a light eternal being, fully spirit, fully God, fully man in this realm to see the release of that creation. It's the light that comes up. He is the light. He's the light and the life of all men. I'm going to say it again. Creation said, let there be. It's, it's, it's not about what we like. Like, I remember years ago, I'm like, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the prince of God, I'm just like, you know? And I'm like, we're in worship, corporate worship, and no one, no one, no one else's head is like going wild at that, that time. <laughs> and I'm saying, Lord, I mean, after a while, I mean, I didn't worry about it to begin with because I was just, I was just caught up in Him. But then after a while, I was like, what, 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 what is that? What's it? No, no one's doing that, you know. After a while, I might like hurt my, you know. Nick and stuff and but as I went on you come into your understanding revelation as the light and the life being released through my body and into the environment in this place because I've surrendered my body to the vibration of his sound I've, read, I've surrendered my body to the vibration of his spirit I don't think it's ADHD is that what you call it? That's another time, all right. <laughs> but it's the, the vibration and the sound, it's the light and surrendering your body to the sound. Surrendering your body to the light. What are you doing? You're surrendering your body. And it is creating. If, if, if it isn't released, it stays within. And you stop the creation. He says, all authority has now been given to me. Therefore, I say, you go. The same commission that he gave Adam and Eve to multiply, to take dominion, to create, to recreate, to multiply, to form. The same commission has been given to us as through Yeshua to take dominion, to create, to multiply. Now, it's not going to be created if you don't create because he's given you sovereign authority. Okay? Sovereign authority. We are not in his image if we do not have sovereignty. All right? It's not just about our will. It's about our sovereignty. Now, we choose to put our sovereignty into him or we choose to not. And sovereignty is the seat of our government. And as we choose to be wrapped up in Him, to, 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 to become one as He is, in order for that light to come forth into creation. He is the light and the life of all men. 
That light in that life is the very same light that created the earth. The very same light. That's why we're not waiting. I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting anyway. <laughs> I'm not waiting. <laughs> you can come with me if you want. <laughs> Let's go together. Hey? Let's go together. Hey? Let's go together. That's why I love tonight with all the different sounds and the and the other wave of the song that came up, you know, and, and just moving with him. We're not here to just bring some type of program and we're here to see him. And we're here to to resound who he is and to surrender our, our body to the sound of his voice. I just want you to get that understanding that that light, that 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 when you rise up, when you let it go, when you dance, when you move. I'm releasing Yeshua right now. I'm releasing the light and the life of my father in this place. Right now. shaking or not shaking it's about the surrendered life into the frequency of the father to break open through us this mind is our worst enemy the carnal mind is our worst enemy we're being so conditioned to the world so conditioned to a, a tradition that has not been God, that has not been the kingdom of God. And so it is a battle in our mind. And it's a challenge when we see a certain dimension of that light and that life coming through somebody. It's like, whoa. But if you can know what's happening even tonight now know what is happening when we are resounding when we are moving not just being so but we are moving in the moments we move with heaven we don't move with self if heaven is still in the seat we're still if there is a vibration that is <laughs> then that's what we do but if there's a vibration that is That's what we do. We resound it in the earth as it is in heaven. We move. What do we think? The flags and the movement and the... What do we think? These things. And these are so important because of the sound. Of what it releases, Very good. what it creates, because you know whether we like it or not, we are creating every moment of our life. There is not a moment that we're not creating, and we either we either creating out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Good things aren't God things. Anything from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We're not here to decipher what's good and evil. That's not what we're here. That's the tree of life. We're here to jump into the tree of life. Yes. And, and, and drink, eat yes. the fruit yes. of Him. Yes. His flesh, His body. Yes. Drink His blood. Yes. He said it Himself that we will become, we're eating, partaking of who He is. Yes. And out of that, I resound who He is. And I take on the appearance of who he is. You are supposed to look like him. You are supposed to look eternal, everlasting, unlimited. You are there. You are supposed to look heavenly. Heavenly. We are, as the body of Christ, the alcohol is supposed to bring in a whole nother dimension. We are supposed to present the realm of eternity to all creation. Every single one of us are supposed to present this realm. We let the earth realm dictate our life. 
Because we get caught up with our doing what we think we should do or not. As believers, what's the next doctrine? What's the next thing? Instead of seeing his face. That's why it's so important when we read out that scripture about coming in to, through the thunders and the lightnings. Letting that hit your body. Into him. And just being with him. And then when I see him and I walk into the earth, there's a different light that manifests. It's not the light of the world. It's not, the, it's not a, a system that I've tried to work out with my mind and with my, my head. But it's the light and the life of who he is. Because I'm not waiting for him. But I am searching him. I am running into him. I am finding him however possible that can be every day draw near to him what's really awesome and amazing is that the father is established you know I sort of come to realize that with us you know I've never I've never I've always had that mindset from the moment I became born again from above in 1989 and it's it, I, I realized you know he it, it's a whole movement that he is wanting to establish in the earth the building blocks but he's had to do a foundation he's had to go deep and deep and deep because he creates through us we have to really get that like like seriously we have to get it he creates through us okay he's not going to do it in the sense of like he's just you know we're waiting for him to do it but we don't realize our partnering our joining is we we, we create with him in that we not by ourselves but in Him and with Him. But it's in Him and with Him that we create. I know we've come out of, some of us have come out of works-based, okay? Um, value in our works and in our Christianity and, and, and we've broken out where we don't have to do it this way or that way or this way or that way because it was born, it, it, what we started in the spirit ended up being in the flesh and it became our value source and our base and we do all these things that are unnecessary but the Lord will then dismantle all of that. He, I mean it says in, is it Jeremiah where he talks about how he, he pulls down, there's a time to tear down, there's a time to uproot, there's a time to destroy Destroy, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But guess what? Once that happened, there is a time to then build. There's a time to recreate. Okay, now when it comes to recreate, then there are new ways that we learn. But they are the ways now of eternity. We're back into the eternal Holy Spirit of Christ. And we start to learn those ways. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't do it that way. No, no, now we've shifted. And we learn his ways. Just like Moses. It's all there in Exodus. Show me your ways that I would know you. There's something about knowing his ways that brings us into the heart of who he is also. It's a track that we track. That, that my search to know his ways is my search to know him. And so, so there comes a time where there is a building time that takes place in our life and it's time to rebuild some of us might be about to enter to a dismantling stage in your life okay some of you might be looking at the dismantling going nope <laughs> nope I remember can I say this can I, it was so cool can I say this I remember when we recently run we uh, Ron did a session and Getting, getting the cracking some of stuff open, and and he got the tribe to go and be in a circle, and and gets to Kelvin, <laughs> and and you know, Ron says, "Oh, come on. what did you say something about? Um, just let this let it out, roar." And he's like, 
I don't want to. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you know what was awesome about that? The vulnerability. You know, the vulnerability, the willingness, even though there was like, I don't want to, there's a willingness because of the expression of I don't want to, which then opened a door and a roar came out that unlocked something in his life. We're afraid of the dismantling. But we have to no longer be afraid anymore. We do not have to be afraid. We don't. We are in Him. We are not entering into a deception. We cannot be because He is in control. We must recognize His voice and lean into that voice. And when it's uncomfortable, when you feel the dismantling, allow yourself to be dismantled, destroyed. Uprooted The Yeshua I knew Isn't who I thought he was I don't know how to pray anymore I don't know how to worship anymore Do you understand that? All of that has to be dismantled And we have to not search Search out somebody to show us how to pray. We have to search his face. We have to search him. That he would break. Every All of us has to go through that. Our job is just to make way. To see him. Our job, my job is not making way so that you can see me. My job is to make way so that you can see Him. Not see, not see my voice, not see my revelation, but to see Him. Paul said, I don't come with just fancy words or words of wisdom and revelation. If it was revelation and words only, your attention is on me. And he said, I come in demonstration of spirit and power. Even in the journey of searching our God, we settle for revelation. We can't be settled for anything else except him. He, his ways, yes. He will show us His ways. Yes, He deposits things in forerunners and people's lives in order to become a trumpet and a sound that will be released so that you would see Him. Not for you to turn their attention on them, but for you to see Him. Yes, to honour the vessels and the grace. In doing that, we honour Him. But we understand it's our search for Him. To know Him, to see Him. That's the, the spirit and power with the wisdom and the revelation. Whew. So tearing down, putting down, but now it's time. Some of us are on the tearing down. Some of us are in the middle of being disrupted. Some of us are now on the rebuilding stage. Some of us have a couple of flaws. <laughs> <laughs> but then corporately too corporately as the body of Christ there's still a lot of dismantling to happen there's just a few here there's a lot of believers in the earth but you know what the awesome thing is it's begun yeah it's begun it's begun oh, about 15 years ago the Lord I remember I declared 16 maybe I was like it's begun and the devil because the church is so devil focused can't do a single thing about it he cannot stop are we other people thought it being aborted I knew it had been born And 
now the foundation is set in this nation. Come on. Now it can only just accelerate. And we're building in the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a shout out. Eh? Hallelujah. Oh!
We will release our worship and our ministry into the Father. When we shift from our performance into being ministers into our God, He says that Yeshua is raising up a kingdom of priests. A kingdom of priests and minister unto Him. Why is that ministering unto Him? Because our eyes are gazed upon His, our breath with His breath, our heart with His heart. And we come into the sound of His voice. And then with the sound of His voice, He turns us over all creation, seated with Him in all the layers of the realms. And we breathe, and the Father breathes through us into creation. This is our priesthood. And as the Father breathes in the sound of His voice, which is the light and the life, which is Yeshua resonating through us and we release that through sound, vibration, dance and stillness. It's like... Raging, quiet, violent and still. Raging, quiet and violent and still. All the manifestations of the voice of God flowing through your body. Now there is a frequency, a lightness that is resonating in this place. When we bring our body into agreement through movement, that light in life is released in creation and builds the canopy of the Lord over the nation. It's time for the rising and the unlocking of the sound, the vibration of heaven, of eternity, through your body, through this land, new beginning! Kingdom come, you will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Kingdom come, you will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Kingdom come, you will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, you will be done in the earth as it is in heaven.
go forth with the mandate that the Father has established and given you to do. Go! Let nothing be unturned. Let nothing be undone. For the fullness and the fulfillment of the plan and the desire of our